how I understand the relationship between sex and resistance, um, I would say is not really that much different than how I defined it um, at the beginning of the year. But um, now I see the relationship as more of like an order rather than a suggestion, if that makes sense. Uh, so like after reading the various materials throughout the semesters, um, like El Tawi and um, Roxanne Gay, they call us to resist the patriarchy and its uh, ridiculous restraints on women. Um, in Mona El Tahawi's The Seven Necessary Sins for Women and Girls, in chapter six, violence, she says that it is the right of women and girls to not just fight back against the patriarchy, but surely it should be our right to fight to dismantle the patriarchy itself. Surely violence is a legitimate form of resistance. Uh, that's on page 156. Uh, so resistance is like to stand up against something and that is, that is not right and to fight for what you believe um, to be right. Uh, I One of the things that I found extremely powerful that we read uh, was Drapati. So the story I think was like a wonderful depiction of um, sex and resistance and what that is. Uh, the bravery and gall that uh, Japati had to stand up against her attacker um, after the horrendous acts uh, that they did to de demean her, um, or to demean uh, him, that she uh, was able to stand up against him was really powerful. Um, I think that women are really often taught to be ashamed after such like terrible things are committed to them. But I really liked when Drapati said, um, quote, there isn't a man here that I should be ashamed. What more could you do to me? And if for the first time, Sinenyak is afraid to stand, and for the first time, Sinenyak is afraid to stand before an unarmed target, terribly afraid. Uh, that was just really cool. That was like the last uh, paragraph of Drapati. Um, so this story just put like a lot of things into perspective for me. And um, so for the last part of the question, within the next month, how am I gonna put these into practice? Um, I, as I, I'm gonna put it into practice as I venture out into like the working world uh, back home. So um, I will make sure to stand up um, for myself and not let how Elsa Howie puts it in chapter six, um, I believe is like women are taught to be passive. Um, I couldn't find the exact quote, but I remember her saying something like that. Um, I do not plan to be taken advantage of because I know my worth. Um, I find, uh, I did find a quote from the first chapter, um, Anger, that El Tahawi says, yes, I am an angry woman and angry women are free. Uh, so I plan to embrace this idea and not let my passive, um, my passive nature as a small young woman uh, be taken advantage of. In the past, I've been unable to stand up for myself, and so my time and efforts have been taken advantage of. Um, but this course and the various materials that we have gone through um, have provided me with the motivation and the, um, provide me with the motivation and the idea that it is okay to be angry and to stand up for myself, so yeah.